Hi, world history people. Uh, so today, which is Friday, um, we are going to begin um, our next topic, which would have been called the Age of Discovery. So we're going to really kind of shrink this down, really shrink it down to the Age of Discovery and just really one person, Christopher Columbus. And we're going to look next week and you'll start today. This will be due next Friday. So this will be a week long um, assignment and um, next week I'll just get on Monday and Wednesday with an announcement making sure that you're on track and if you have any questions so um, so what we're gonna look at today with the age of discovery uh, is Christopher Columbus so a little bit of background before we dive into looking at Christopher Columbus the age of discovery begins um, during and after the Protestant Reformation and so the age of discovery is really about three things it is about gold meaning riches and wealth all of these European countries are after riches and wealth the second obviously is about glory right this glory that you can bring to your country by sticking your flag in all these different places and then the last one is God especially for countries like Spain which remained Catholic um, and their goal becomes to spread Christianity slash Catholicism around the globe so those are the three guiding forces of the age of discovery gold glory and God the three G's the gold is not necessarily what we think of as digging in the ground and finding gold gold is just wealth and the greatest wealth that will come as a result of the age of discovery will be spices and those spices are going to be found in India or as it's called then the Orient India and China and that's where everyone's trying to get for these spices and they're really common spices like cinnamon and pepper and cayenne and saffron spices that we can walk into um, any grocery store and buy for 99 cents but those spices one ship could make you a 300 percent profit it is extraordinary how wealthy that you can get in sailing a ship to the orient india and coming back with those uh, spices so everyone's after it everyone wants to do it the side obviously is the glory of, of planting your flag and then the last part again is the spreading of, of Christianity or Catholicism so um, nations are all about that however it takes a long time because I'm gonna draw in the air now when they leave the coast of Europe they have to sail all the way around the continent of Africa all the way back up into India and it's a long trip it's a very long trip and it's a very hazardous trip especially around the uh, tip of Africa um, so they're always looking for better ways well this gentleman by the name of Cristobal is Italian he's not Spanish he's Italian and he's trying to convince these people who back these voyages of discovery that you could get to India by sailing west across this thing that we now know as the Atlantic Ocean instead of sailing east around Africa no one believes him no one wants to sponsor his ship so he leaves and goes to Spain and he approaches this really important powerful woman named Catherine of Aragon uh, I'm sorry Catherine of Aragon sorry that's a, a different Isabel um, Queen Isabel and that's Catherine of Aragon's mother my mind is in a different place scratch that Isabel and he approaches Isabel with his idea I can get a ship I can sail to the east and I will hit the Indies much quicker and much faster she's like how do you know that he goes well all these calculations about the circumference of the earth and now we're going to take a sidebar I really really hope that there is not still anyone at Sullivan Elementary or Sullivan Middle School still teaching that Christopher Columbus discovered that the earth was round because we knew the earth was round we've known the earth was round since the Greeks no one thought the earth was flat except maybe some people in 2019 and I don't know where they're coming from so what he says to Isabella is that the circumference of the earth is smaller than what was normally calculated me Cristobal smart guy I don't think it's that big 
and I think I can get there by sailing on this ocean. I don't think it's that large. So let's make sure we understand. The reason people went east was because there was a path. The reason they didn't go west was they thought that ocean was so large that no one could survive the trip, not because it was flat. So if there's one thing that you take from this class, and especially these e-learning days, if you ever, ever, ever thought that Christopher Columbus discovered the world was round, please erase that from your brain and tell anybody that you ever hear say that, you're wrong. So he convinces. He convinces, he tells Isabella, it, I can get there quicker. She's still not convinced. But then he adds this little thing to Isabella, who is a most devout queen, who is Catholic. Hey, and on the way, we probably can convert a whole lot of people to Christianity slash Catholicism. And that's what sways her. So she finances his trip, and he's going to leave with three ships. Um, and when he uh, begins his voyage again, his goal is to get to India. So he sails. We know he's not going to get to India because there's this big giant thing impeding his trip to India, North America, and South America. And he hits these islands where he thinks he is in India, hence the West Indies, hence calling these people Indians, because Christopher Columbus never, ever, ever believed that he had discovered, not really discovered, but he had um, voyaged to a new country. He always thought it was India. He goes back three times after his initial thinking, if I just keep going a little further um, west, I will hit India, which we know he never will. So, hence those little islands called the West Indies, hence the native um, uh, indigenous people to those areas he called Indians and he didn't get there. He happened upon a new place, North America, and therein lies this part of our assignment. So you're going to look at um, the uh, some primary sources to view Columbus through two different lenses. One, as an awesome hero, look at this place he found. Two, as a villain. So why would he be considered a villain? Um, part of it is what happens when he gets there, right? Um, these are native uh, indigenous people living their own life, not anywhere remotely similar to what the life is like for Christopher Columbus back in Europe. And so he minimizes their intelligence, uh, their capabilities, um, he uh, subjugates them into servitude and uh, for the most part is, uh, is uh, just absolutely destructive to the land and the people that live there. And he brings diseases and all of those other things. The positive thing that comes out of this is a thing called the Columbian Exchange. And the Columbian Exchange, obviously named for Christopher Columbus, but not at the time when it occurs by historians uh, many times later. Uh, but what Christopher Columbus and this Columbian exchange gives us is this exchange of goods and ideas. So into the new world comes um, uh, interesting things like uh, weapons and steel and horses, and then out back to Europe comes foods, potatoes, um, all different types of things. So that Colombian exchange is a good uh, positive or negative, depending, because lots of bad things, diseases and all that are going to go back and forth. So um, Christopher Columbus is really seen as the um, ideal person in this, uh, this age of discovery. Um, good things and bad things. So in your assignment, what you're going to be looking at are primary sources answering questions about Christopher Columbus. And then the final assignment is you're going to write a short paper. Now, let's talk about this, the paper. It needs to really be a paper. So it needs an introduction. It needs three paragraphs, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. You have a whole week to do this and a whole week to write it. So it should be very well done. In that writing, you need to make sure that you include some of the source work that you're going to be reading about and um, take your time on assessing all that and reading all that. 
Now, it asks you, can you be a villain or a hero? Um, and um, you can uh, debate that in your paper. All right. So please let me know if you have any questions. I hope you're doing okay. I am uh, recording this on Thursday. And when I looked out my window, I think I saw little flakes of snow. It is freezing. I'm sitting here under my blanket, which is why I'm on my couch today, because I am freezing and I am determined not to turn my heat on at all um, since I've had it off on those nice um, warm days. So uh, I hope you're doing well. And uh, let me know if you have any questions about this assignment. It's fairly well laid out um, and you shouldn't have any trouble with it. So um, this again, Age of Discovery, Christopher Columbus. Talk with you later. Bye.